Hello there. Thanks so much for joining me today. I am Colleen Klimczak. I'm an organizational and productivity coach and a certified professional organizer. I own Peace of Mind Professional Organizing, LLC. Since 2003, I've been helping my clients live better lives through organizing and organizational and productivity coaching. I support my clients and my community with coaching, in-person and virtual organizing, my weekly podcast called Your Organized Life with Colleen Klimczak, a free weekly virtual productivity session called Finish Line Friday, a free weekly email newsletter, and regular content on Facebook and Instagram. I also offer presentations and professional development to groups and companies. And coming soon, I look forward to launching my membership circle to continue to support my community with even more coaching and productivity content. Want to finish strong this week? Join me for Finish Line Friday every Friday morning at 9 a.m. Central for a two-hour productivity session. Drop me an email at colleen at peaceofmindpo.com or follow the Zoom Room link on my Instagram or Facebook pages. Welcome to Your Organized Life, episode 87. So I am writing this uh, content this week with two specific young adults in mind. And of course, all of the rest of us and our college students. I have a friend who is headed off to college for the first time in August. And then my son is heading off to his first apartment in college this August. So I have both of them on my mind as I write the content for this week and also for next. So I had a conversation recently with a friend regarding the difference between health and wellness and medical issues. They were discussing, you know, taking a multivitamin and eating their veggies as a medical issue. And that's not. That's a health and wellness issue versus medical, which is, you know, lab results from a year ago, right? So both are very important to overall wellness, but they really need to be considered as different. The best strategies for, well, really health and wellness and medical are to obviously eat well, stay hydrated, get adequate sleep. Those are obvious to our students and ourselves, but I also want to um, prepare us and our young adults to head off to college with some ideas and tips in hand and also a basic first aid kit. So that's where we are headed today. So in addition to, you know, basic first aid, like here's a Band-Aid for your boo-boo, we also need to consider that some students have chronic health challenges that they manage while in college that require daily monitoring and medication. I think back to my son's freshman year of college roommate who had uh, diabetes. And so he had obviously some things that he needed to put in place for him to live successfully independently in the dorms that first year. So things like diabetes, ADHD, depression, anxiety, seizures, to name a few, right? So the habits around managing these more chronic challenges should be discussed and supported with your student. Examples of physical support could be making sure that there's a special dorm refrigerator to keep insulin refrigerated, or making sure that if your student has medication that they take regularly, that they have a local pharmacy or mail order pharmacies, you know, already set up to maintain their medication supplies. And also, you know, maybe it's providing a portable safe in the dorm room to protect medications long term. So those are some of the physical supports around those chronic challenges. And then we can also have the non-physical supports. So habit and routine supports can look like timers and alarms to remind a student to take their medications or informing the university of chronic challenges or establishing supportive parental protocols and troubleshooting solutions with your students before right, before they head off to campus, but helping them figure out solutions ahead of time um, to their common problems again before they head uh, off to school. We've talked about chronic right away, but I also want to talk about the very basic first aid kit, right? So we all need to um, have a first aid kit, whether it's in our house, and certainly our students should have one at school as well. What should be in it and also, and maybe more importantly, does your student know how to use those items that are in it? Um, You know, have a conversation before they head off about when to call 911 
or when to go to the doctor and also figure out with them where is the doctor on campus or near campus ahead of visiting, right? So back to a first aid kit for college. If you are thinking of uh, packing off your student um, to head off to school, or if you don't have a first aid kit in your home, it might be, no, let's just say it. It is definitely the right time to think about having a first aid kit. A good kit full of supplies is also a great going back to school gift pack the basics plus information on how to use them and when to see someone at the campus health center. So what to pack? First of all, figure out what it is you need to pack. Start with the basics for if your teen has a cut or a scrape or minor burn. Consider packing adhesive bandages in all sizes, nonstick gauze, adhesive tape, antibacterial ointment to prevent infections in a wound or minor burn, and also the know-how of what to do with minor wound care. You know, wash it, dry it, keep it dry, um, and remind them that alcohol stings and peroxide doesn't. So they should know the difference and, uh, and how, how to use all of that. And again, when to call 911 if applying pressure for a little while doesn't stop the bleeding or if it needs a stitch, absolutely it's time to go to the health center. We also want to think about packing an elastic bandage for sprains or strains. You could do um, an elastic bandage to wrap and provide compression for sprains and strains, maybe some ice packs or even a heating pack, that might be a possibility, or a warm pack or heating pad, right? So if you have um, a student who has, you know, a, an older injury or something like that and they've used those before at home, make sure that they have them when they head off to school because if they needed them at home, they're likely to need them at school as well. Past wound care, right? Past the boo-boos. Uh, let's think about, too, what medication over the counter your student might need to take with them. So things to consider for a headache or heartburn, right? We've had conversations in my house about acetaminophen, also known as Tylenol, and ibuprofen, also known as Advil. And we have chronic migraines um, from some family members in our house. And so we've had that conversation regularly, um, knowing, first of all, which which one works for you, right, is really important. So Tylenol or Advil, acetaminophen or ibuprofen, and also what they're intended to do. Acetaminophen is for fevers and definitely for um, aches and pains. Ibuprofen is an anti-inflammatory as well. So um, one of them is hard on your liver and one of them is hard on your tummy. So again, knowing that for your student is really important. Um, and by the way, that wasn't being clever. Um, ibuprofen tends to be hard on people's stomachs. Other things to think about if you're sending your kids off with any kind of allergy medication or cough medicine, again, over the counter, is to remind them that, that some medications may make you sleepy, like Benadryl, and others may actually make you wired, right? So if there's something that they're taking, they need to know what the um, possible uh indications and side effects might be, right? So all of those things need to be discussed uh, before your kids head off to school and use that medication without, um, without talking about it first would be a bad idea, right? Other things to think about in a first aid kit, consider uh, packing like tweezers and a thermometer, um, maybe they need an eye wash, right? So if your teen gets something in their eyes, like a chemical, dust, or even, you know, something else that's irritating, that might be really great to have on hand. That would also be one of those places where anything having to do the eyes with the eyes, I'd probably call 911 a little sooner. Right. So there's also lots of um, resources out there. If you want to Google these ideas, you're probably going to find even more things. But having the conversation about how to use the items in a first aid kit, in addition to packing the first aid kit, those two things have to work together. Next, once we've figured out what we want to pack, we need to think about what to pack it in. There is a reason why my first aid kits in my car are in bright red boxes, right? Because everybody kind of knows that a big red box with a white cross on it is a first aid kit. So that's not a bad thing to have, but really, you know, any durable plastic box with a lid would do, 
but you can find specifically um, a waterproof box, maybe camping supply store or something like that, that would be for first aid specifically and might even say that on the front. Um, we want to be able to identify that from across the room at a glance in case somebody needs it. So once we've talked about what to take and how to take it, there's a few things in addition that your student should probably have before they head off to school. Things like your insurance card. Um, have your insurance company send you a copy, have an additional card um, just for your student to take with them off to school, right? So they need to have that in hand. They should be carrying that in their wallets anyway. Um, in addition, having their own uh, doctor back home's information, but also the information for the local you know, health center on campus or in the neighborhood um, is something that's really important that they should have before they need it, right? If there's a, a possibility that your child is handling one of those chronic challenges that we mentioned at the beginning, um, make sure that their friends know and that they have a way of letting their friends know um, what kind of um, you know, symptoms that people might need to look for or how to help them if there was some kind of crisis again. So those are just some things that we need to think about as we're sending our students off to help them manage those things better for themselves because these are skills that are going to help them forever, we hope. That's the idea at least. Packing up a few first aid essentials is a great gift for your teen, especially the conversations that go with it. And it's also a reminder to always stay safe and a lesson in how to take care of problems while away from home. All of that in one kit. So what is important that you need to focus on this week? If it's support around getting your most important things like supporting your students done, that is what productivity coaching is all about. If it's time to invest in yourself and explore coaching for organizing and productivity, I would love to hear from you. Drop me a line via email at colleen at peaceofmindpo.com or message me through any of my social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Thanks so much and talk to you next week. <music>